I believe. Great play there by Flynn, who had the puck, didn't have a man to pass it to in the middle, so he put the shot on and set up, bobbled it just a little bit. Of course, McGeo couldn't get a stick on it. You'll see it bobbled in the net after Flynn takes the shot. Now watch as Seta just lets it go a little bit. McGeo can't get a stick to it, even though it's loose in front. No one else follows, and he's got time to cover up. He had McGeo cutting right across. Good move by Flynn to get around with it at the blue line. Loose puck in center ice. Del Mastro racing for it. He's got Wikers on him. And now the pass is backing up over the line. Keith Carney dumps it right back in. Good job back on defense by Hendrick in that time. Hendrickin in center ice. Loose puck taken by Bethune, who turns and dumps it in. 8.09 remaining second period. 2-0 the mount. Puck in the mount corner. Robeson to Carney. Keith E. Carney going to the University of Maine next year. Off the boards, a pass to LaCroix. Slap shot just missed the far side. Robeson keeps it in, puts it on net. I think it was deflected over Berard's head, and it's to the near wing side, and now we've got a penalty here. Check it. We have a batting with a high stick and the faceoff coming all the way down. You see referee Frank Rockcliffe, the way he blew the whistle and gave that indication at first, I thought he was calling a high sticking penalty in front, but it was batting with a high stick. It did look and like that, and we have the faceoff down in the other zone. Uh, Hendrick and coach Rick Bozer over there exhorting his team to uh, get going, and there's Bill and Dave Belisle. There's Bill. Who's been at Mont St. Charles for what, 11 years now, John? Uh, no, it's more than that. 14 13. years. 13. This He's at the end of the bench at uh, on the Mont St. Charles side with one foot up <laughs> on the dasher, and that's where he will stay for the entire game, way down at the far end. Unless he has somebody in particular he's got to come and talk to in terms of a Mont St. Charles player who may have made a mistake. He's not afraid to chew somebody out. He hates to see those mistakes, but normally he'll just watch that game from the far side. Bacon with a loose puck and a shot wide of the net. Labreche throws it across. Nothing doing. Back comes Hendrickin. Bacon breaks up Raposa. John Raposa for Hendrickin. Gets it back from his defenseman up in center ice again. Loose puck. Now it's controlled by Caccini. Cross ice to Klein. Up ahead. Gaudreau can't get it. No icing on the play. Keith T. Carney goes back for the mount. Keith Carney decides to come back this way. And now it's Labreche on the left side for the mount. Kept in by Kramer. Now it's Raposa, but they say that Raposa gloved it, or they say Kramer gloved it and squeezed it with his hand, and you can't do that. You can gather the puck in with your hand and bat it, but you can't close your hand on it, of course, and so the faceoff comes outside the line. Rick? 7.03 to go in the second quarter, second period, and we've got a 2-0 lead for Mount St. Charles on goals by Derek Chevette at 3.40, and Brian Jeffries coming at 5.32. Keith Carney to Hanley up to Chevette he's checked on the play Hanley gets the loose puck but it's offside yeah trying to sneak in there on the left wing we had uh, a couple of skaters for Mount St. Charles actually that offside forced very nicely by the defense of Hendrickin now Hendrickin's got to buckle down here at least uh, get some more offensive opportunities for themselves without giving up the defense that's what's happened I think they pressed a little bit trying to get the good shots on net and that's allowed Mount St. Charles the opportunities Mark McGill for Hendrickin Checked on the play by Rodolfi. Now a loose puck collected by Hanley. Tries to get it to Chevette, but it's broken up by Omicelli. Chevette gets it back. Back to Robeson for the mount. Robeson skates it up, fires it in. Saved by Berard. Didn't handle it the way he wanted it to. And now Mount controls Rodolfi out in front. Can't get a shot away as the puck comes back to center ice. Keith Carney flips it back in. Collected by Potter. Tries to tie it up. It's loose. Hanley with it. Back to Keith Carney. Out in front, loose puck. Rodolfi trying to get it. He's checked on the play, and it comes to the near wing boards, and Mike Flynn, who can't get it. And now it's tied up along the side, and we'll have a faceoff. And a little rough stuff there after the whistle. And we've got a penalty, too. They're both going to go out. The officials stepping right in and not wanting to let uh, anything happen at this point in a very well-played contest so far. John, that first line from Mount St. Charles, uh, outstanding. Brian Rodolfi, Derek Chevette, Scott Hanley. Chevette's got the goal. The guy to watch, though, the guy that uh, might be the little spark plug to make it happen is number 19, Brian Rodolfi. Loves to skate, has amazing stamina, can go all game long, and he's the one that they, uh, Hendrickin, just cannot afford to take an eye off. Now, we've got a penalty uh, that will have the teams even up. Two guys in the penalty box. Uh, we didn't catch a number on that, John. We'll it's get him for you, but it's four on four for the next minute 30. It's going to be Chevette for the Mount and Potter for Hendrickin. Here's Bill Belisle to the right of your screen. His son Dave with a mustache pointing is alongside. Right, four on four. We'll see what the actual call is. 
but Chevette for the Mount Potter for Hendrickson. LaCroix on the draw with Kramer. Puck back to center ice and Jeff Robeson. This will open it up for everybody with a four on four. Back on it is Gaudreau, who's playing defense in this situation now. Over to Gaudreau on the near wing boards. He takes it back behind his own goal. Klein with it to Gaudreau. Up through center ice. Robbie Gaudreau, co-captain. Checked off the play. Kramer can't get it. Now Jason Lawton flips it up into center ice. And back goes Klein for it. Crowd's excited here at Mead Auditorium. Klein fires it too far for McGeo. Robeson flips it back into center ice. Klein waiting for McGeo to come back. But now we have a loose puck. And LaCroix gets it to win it. Win it along the right side. Checked by Kramer. And Kramer collects. McGeo. Right side through center ice for Hendrickson. The shot blocked by Robeson. McGeo gets it back. Fires again off the side of the net. Puck in the corner. Win it and Kramer tie it up. 31 seconds to go on the penalties. We're even up 4-4, skating with 5.08 to go in the second period and a 2-0 Mount St. Charles lead. Officially, John, for those who might be scoring this one, it was Potter and Chevette going off for roughing at 8.52 of the second period. The uh, second set of penalties called in the contest. Crowd enjoying the game as it's tough for the players, but I think some of the fans take this... Uh, uh, a little bit seriously themselves as the uh, intensity has built and built and built and it's all going to end today. O'Connor's drive is banned. Here comes Hanley from Mont St. Charles. One on two. He's all alone. Hanley gets a shot off. It's wide of Burrard and O'Connor is back to collect for Bishop Hendrickson. 16 seconds of the matching penalties. Hanley intercepts. Gaudreau is there and it's Hendrickson. Top line for Mount St. Charles spending a lot of time on the ice. Mike Flynn is tripped up and impeded. We're going to have Keith P. Carney going off for tripping. Kind of a body trip, if you will, but it was enough to impede and knock down Flynn. Hey, you don't just have to trip with a stick. You trip with a body, and Keith P. Carney, there he is, whistled off. So, well, in six seconds, we'll have a power play for Hendrickson. Here you go with the penalty now. The trip, it comes at a very bad time for Mount St. Charles as the, uh, even the matching penalty is almost over. And so now for six seconds, Hendrick is going to have a two-man advantage. And to, for the next minute 24, a one-man advantage. There's Bill Bolisle, who's got to be a little concerned now. He's got a two-goal lead, but with 4.43 to go in the second period, you don't want to give up anything now. Power play goals, uh, power play percentage on conversion so far for Bishop Hendrick and 42%. That's an incredible stat. They have a terrific power play. You'll see when they work it around, they'll have Gaudreau at one point and maybe Klein at the other. The Hendrickson power play is very, very effective. Official call on that was Carney with a trip at 10-17 of the second period. So, John, for six seconds, a two-man advantage. That's not uh, too bad. But we've got, uh, oh, excuse me, we've got a one-man advantage four here. On, it'll be four on three. It'll be four on four for, four on three for six seconds. And that penalty is expired. All right, so here's now. Kramer through center ice, cross the line. Bobby Kramer comes back and looks. Hendrick on the power play. The pass across is blocked by Chevette and cleared. A change for Mount St. Charles coming out on the ice there. Uh, taking Derek, Derek Chevette's place is Mike LaCroix. He'll skate in the middle. Mike Flynn the across defense. the line, down the right wing boards. Gets by Robeson into the corner. Mike Flynn checked by Wittet now. Gets it back. Klein closes. McGeo rather. Shot and saved by Seta. Hendrick in controls. Behind the net. McGeo to Kramer. Back in the corner to McGeo. Kramer again. Bobby Kramer. It's back to Gaudreau and he can't keep it in. Great play by Mike LaCroix. Just got a stick on it for Mount St. Charles to force the Hawks to regroup. Well, on the right wing boards, McGeo fires it into the corner. He's got Klein in there. Klein's caught all the way in. Kramer along the left side. He falls on it. LaCroix is right there and will have a faceoff. To Pat set his right. There's a good look at Bobby Kramer. Terrific first line center on this power play. He's going to be going to Providence College next year, and I'm sure Coach Mike McShane of the Friars is very glad about that. In fact, Jeff Robeson of the Mount will also be going to Providence College. This is where the discipline comes in. 3.36 to go in the period, 23 seconds to go on the penalty. Or initially there, John, they had whistled the faceoff outside the line. Now they're bringing it back into the left circle. Well, I'm surprised here because really, it was Kramer who fell on it. And you would think, if I was Mount St. Charles, I'd 
be beckoning for that faceoff to be outside, but it is not. LaCroix against Kramer on the draw. 23 seconds on the Hawks' power play. Cleared out of the zone by Brendan Winnett. Gaudreau starts it back for the Hawks. Right side pass to Flynn. Mike Flynn, one-on-one -on -one with Robeson. Flynn controls, brings it across. Down to McGeeo in the corner, brings it back out. Tries to see Kramer the pass did not connect. They're all even now as Keith P. Carney's penalty is successfully killed off by the mount. And we've got an icing call. And with 3.08 remaining second period, the Mount St. Charles crowd on their feet, congratulating the Mounties for killing off the penalty. The Mount crowd knows that the Hawks' power play is very, very effective. And so, 3.08 remaining, Rick's second period, 2-0 the Mount. Oh, what a good chance there. Bobby Kramer just couldn't get a stick to the puck as he had an opportunity. He's the senior co-captain, and as you said, he's going to Providence College, but he just couldn't hit it home. Perhaps if he was a left-hand shot, it would have been an easy goal, but he had it on the wrong side of the stick and couldn't flip it around to the backhand in time. Puck is tied up in the corner by Keith E. Carney. Here's Keith, number six. He hurt his shoulder in game two. He tried to play in Wednesday night's game. He played only a few shifts. He did not even go out in the overtimes, but he says he's much better and almost 100%. He is there, without a doubt, their best defenseman. Keith P, back to Keith E, Carney. <laughs> now Keith P. Back comes DeMont. Up ahead, here's Derek Chivette. Chivette closing, tries to get it to Hanley. Nice play by Omicelli to block the pass. Good back checking by Chris. Kevin Moreau, up to Jackard, too far. Back for Keith P. Carney, to the other Carney. Hanley and O'Connor battle. And now Chivette comes in to help out. Loose puck back to Chivette now. Rodolfi, left side for the mound. Back to Chivette, to Hanley, can't connect. Good work in front by the Mount to get back by O'Connor. Here's Moreau. Poke checked away by Keith Carney. Back over the line and back in, and a 